All right, I feel the need to give a intro to this video. I've been working on editing it, and first and foremost, this is not a step-by-step how-to video. If you need step-by-step, -step, go by the linked website in the description, which are the directions I was going by. But this is something I had to do. The Odyssey 2 is not a console you hear about every day. Not, it's no... It's not an Atari 2600 or a Nintendo Entertainment System. It's a little less well-known, so I thought it'd be fun to show on here. And and frankly, I figured, well, I'm doing this. Maybe somebody can pick up a few tips and tricks from me. So, unfortunately, I don't think I... Uh, I don't think I did the best job saying everything I wanted to say. I was really, really excited to do this project. I have been... Uh, several years ago, the 8-bit guy did a composite mod on an Atari 7800. And ever since that video came out, I've been wanting to do this mod to my dad's Odyssey 2. And it's going to make it so much easier for him to... To hook up and use. So that way he doesn't have to go around to the side of the TV and find the RFN jack. He can just plug it right. They've got a DVD recorder VCR combo unit. It's got front RCA composite jacks. He can just plug it in there. So much easier for him. So. And of course, uh, it'll give him better quality to boot. So that's. So that's why I wanted to do this. So if it sounds things sound kind of incomplete or or uh, a little broken, that's why I was just really into this project. And it seems to be if you're video documenting a project, the project almost has to be back burner compared to the video. So that kind of that's kind of a bummer. But I was really excited to do this, and I kept forget. Okay gotta stop and video and document and there's some stuff I wanted to show that I forgot to show. Oops. Anyway, so hopefully that's everything I wanted to say. So, when was the last time you saw one of these? A Mac, whoa, <laughs> stay open. A Magnavox Odyssey 2. This is my father's, and I uh, played it many times growing up. It's had a lot of use. However, the RF switch box that goes with it, you can see it has seen better days. It's totally fixable, but it's seen better days. And for the longest time, we were using this switch box with it, which actually came from a Mattel Aquarius. And you can see the... The output side has literally fallen off. It literally did that when I pulled it out of the box just now. So anyway, again, get this out of the box, hook it up, and uh, just do some baseline tests. Oh, and one other thing on the RF is uh, I rigged this thing up just with an RCA jack and a ballon, thinking that, well, since these things work at 300 ohms, the output of the Odyssey must be 300 ohms. However, literally just this morning, I thought, wait a second. The output comes over coaxial cable, so it can't be at 300 ohms. And I just took this apart and confirmed that, indeed, yes, there is a, some kind of an impedance matching ballon in here. So this, while it does work in a pinch, is wrong. So anyway, let's get this hooked up real quick. Well, it seems to have a reasonably clean composite output for right now. We'll see how it looks when I uh, put the uh, insert the captured video. But the joysticks are both, one is pretty busticated. The other one, well, works okay if I remember right. But these are going to need some work. So... Let's see if we can at least get some. Yeah, it seems like this either uses the. Oh! 
case you can't tell, I'm not good at games, especially one-handed on the joystick. But that gives us a baseline. We'll see how it works. And full disclosure, before I uh, started shooting this, I did have to uh, break out the deoxin and give both the... Uh, I did it both where the voice module connects to the base and right here at the cartridge slot on the voice module. But you can hear it all works. Well, here's the inside. The RF modulator is uh, sitting nice and happy right here. And it appears this connection to the board might be it. So that's kind of interesting. I can't find, though, any other connections to the board. But what I'm going to do is here's the RF out. Now I'm going to remove this and probably just coil it up inside the case. That way if we, if this mod, we, if I ever feel the need to undo it, I can. I can totally reverse it. And then what I'm going to do is I've got this box here of 22-2 shielded cable so this is 22 gauge two wire but it's shielded so it's shielded cable and it's got two wires so again the common application for this is for microphones it can be used for some types of serial communication but I think for a handful of feet of AV it should be just fine and this is actually um while it says Unreal on it, you can see this is actually a build and brand cable. And I'm going to unwind enough of it. I've already terminated it with a 3.5 millimeter connector. And I'll explain this a little bit later. But I'm going to just bring it in the hole where the RF lead came out. Came through. That way, um, again, I don't have to drill any holes in the case. And if... I ever want to bring this Odyssey 2 back to stock, I can. Previous to starting the video, I got the input wire soldered to the kit. So now to spread them out, find a location to put this thing and start connecting wires. So I think I am going to reorient the console so it's at the same on the as on the picture on the website so that way it'll be less confusing i've got this wired up but i thought just to make sure it doesn't short out on anything i took a piece of heat shrink a giant piece of heat shrink and i'm going to put i've cut a hole in it so you can still get to the potentiometer i'm going to put this over the board and well shrink it tried to video the process but anyway i just wanted to make sure none of these connections on the bottom were going to short out so i think we're good at ouch this point yeah it's still hot who would have thought <laughs> anyway for heat shrink i've got this little arts and crafts heat gun uh what is it yeah 360 watts so it's it's just perfect for stuff like this all right, I've got it soldered in place. Now, I'll just say this. While my soldering doesn't suck, I am far from a soldering wizard. So, it ain't pretty. It ain't perfect, but it's there. And the other thing that makes it interesting is that I'm pretty sure this is a different revision than this. Um... It talked about an RF shield being there, and mine does not have the RF shield. So I'm pretty sure that means that mine is a very new revision. All right. Smoke test. By the way, this VCR I was using to capture the RF, so it's a convenient place to hook in for the composite capture. So anyway... Color's a little weak, but and of course I grabbed the button controller.
Okay, I I still had the bottom off, so I took lifted it up and did an adjustment to that uh, little pot right there as reference on the tablet. So let's try it again. And as usual, I grabbed the wrong one again. I think it's time to put this back together and uh, have a little fun. And I will say, despite using a flat screen television, I was having no issues with um, delay or anything like the that. The reason I went with the uh, my cable and then the three and a half to RCA adapter is uh, A, it was an easy way to come out of the back with only one wire. And since it's be kind of hard to solder multiple RCAs coming off of it, I figured this would be the easiest solution. And of course, if uh, you're playing games, because this game console was not meant to be up next to the TV. It was meant to be sitting on the coffee table, you know, you know, with the keyboard and stuff. But uh, my thought is, is if it's being played and somebody walks along and trips, that's the point to where it can get separated and hopefully cause a little bit and not pull this off the table or pull the VCR off the shelf. But anyway, and wow, I cleaned up my workbench this morning and it's already looks anything but clean. A couple things I've noticed in editing. While the video is uh, a bit cleaner, I was impressed how good it was with just the RF, but the sound seems to be a bit more clear now. However, the sound coming out of this is really hot. So, it seems okay, but I may have to go in and add a resistor at some point, but I'm hoping it'll be fine. And uh, given that it's just a... Uh, you know, sound effects, even if it is distorting a bit, I don't think it'll be that noticeable. Uh, one thing you will, uh, that should be noted is the voice, you know, when the alien guy was talking, that comes directly out of the speaker on the voice module. It does not go through the output, so you won't notice a change on that. In fact, that was literally being picked up by the camera microphone. So, that should sound about the same both times. But, anyway, easy mod, and I've had fun playing the console again. I'm, I'm gonna keep it around here for a little while and play it a few times before I give it back to my dad, that's for sure. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for watching. I'm sure there's a few things I should have done better. And by the way, um, I did not show soldering, because, as I said, I'm not the best at soldering, but... I had a technical problem with my main camera, so I had to shoot this whole video with my iPhone. So that's why some of the shots are kind of shaky. I can't, I don't have an iPhone mount for a tripod, so I had to just hold it, which stunk. So hopefully I can get that minor technical issue worked out with my camcorder. All right. Everybody have a good day, and hopefully you found this video entertaining or educational. And of course, I will have links down in the description of the company I got the little uh, mod board from. And so you can also read their directions on the subject. Alright, have a good day.